Hey folks, and welcome back to Max and A Horsemanship and Baby Steps. And well, you know, I don't know I'm going to be able to show you a whole lot today because uh, probably not going to do a whole lot of new stuff. But uh, I think I might take a minute to show you something with this one. We did once before, but it didn't work particularly well. And I la mentioned in my last video when I was doing it with that other little filly, uh, how it was starting to work real good with this one. Well, I'm going to give that a whirl here and uh, see if it works as well today so I can show you that it, it does in fact work with her. I haven't done anything differently at all. It was The only difference was the uh, first time I tried doing it in here. There was an awful lot of snow and maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. All I know is I'm glad it's gone. Still, the uh, ground's a little moist and it's a little muddy in a few spots. It's not horrible. And... Uh, yeah, weather, it's interesting around here. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, weather forecast for the last two days has kind of been backwards. Uh, yesterday was supposed to be cloudy for part of the day, and, uh, well, it was actually clear blue skies all day. And, uh, well, my last video would be evidence of that. Uh, today uh, was supposed to be clear all day, and it was clear this morning. Earlier today I was out and about, and... Uh, it's actually getting kind of warm. Took my coat off, left it in the car. And well, next time I went to go out, it was overcast. And I thought, well, that's not good. Uh, it was actually quite a bit cooler without the sun. So I put my coat on. And, uh, well, come back out here. And well, it wasn't long after I got out here, the sun came back out. So, uh, as you can see, the coat's not on again. It's hanging up over in the fence over there because I was getting too warm. And uh, I didn't even have it done up or anything. It was just on me. But I, I don't mind being a little warm. I'm one of those people that I'd rather be warm than cold. And uh, I have a little motto on uh, that is uh, it's a lot easier to stay warm than to get warm. And so uh, if I get too warm, I'll, I'll take a layer or two off if I have to. But uh, I'd rather err on that side than getting cold because I don't have enough cold clothes on and then trying to get warmed up after the fact so anyhow uh, but uh, follow up to yesterday's video is uh, you notice how she really wants to be with me because again I made her move and uh, well I've actually asked her to do quite a few things and so she looks up to me she considers me to be her later or mentor, security blanket, I don't know what, call it what you want, but uh, she likes to be with me. Well, I'm going to go get my flag and uh, we're going to make her move again today and see if we get the results that we'd like. Well, as you can see, I've still got her attention. Uh, she still wants to be with me. She's cautiously keeping her distance, but she really does want to come in to me. But uh, right now, I don't want her to. I want her to go. And I'm going to ask her to go and see how this works. I haven't asked her yet today. All I did was put the halter on and laid her over here. That's all I've done today. And so, hard to say what we're going to get exactly. But I do know that she knows how to do this because we've done it a couple times. So uh, we're going to start by pointing. Oh, and she's going the wrong direction. And she's going to turn around and start going the right way, at which point my hand goes away. Again. And uh, she's a little hesitant at first, but uh, no, I don't want you facing up. See, <laughs> this is exactly what she was supposed to do the last time that she wouldn't do. No, keep going. Good girl. There 
there you go. And uh, like I, I said in my last video, perfect example of uh, the smaller the circle is and the slower she's moving, uh, the less nervous she is and the more she actually wants to be with me. Now I'm just going to take a step back and see if she faces up to me now. See what happens. Guess what? She's pointing directly at me, exactly like she's supposed to do. So I, I just wanted to show you that, that uh, the fact that the first time we tried doing this, whether it didn't work well, I was just kind of a fluke and uh, somebody even made a comment uh, on one of my videos saying uh, maybe if she knew how to yield her hindquarters better, uh, that it would work better. And well, she actually does know how to do that. She just didn't want to do it. That's all. I don't, for whatever reason, I can't explain. Didn't work that day. But I've tried it a couple times since then. And as you can see, this is the result. Works perfectly. So I think that's about all we're going to do on camera with her. I just wanted to show you that. You've seen this thing before. Um, seen it a couple times actually now. You've seen it with this one. You've seen it with the other one. You've seen it again with this one. Only working much better. And you can also see how she's just calmly standing there too. You know, she's not going anywhere. She's quite happy to sit down there as long as I leave her alone. And uh, that's what we're going to get. So anyhow, I'm going to carry on and work with her a bit, uh, have her move around a little, and, uh, do some more leading with her again. Uh, we've been doing all this stuff with her. And, uh, it doesn't hurt to do it more. Some of it's pretty darn good. Uh, some of it, not so much. Uh, I think the leading, I think I need to work on that a tiny bit. Uh, and because uh, she still hesitates, gets a little heavy on the lead sometimes. Not bad, you know, she stops when I stop, she backs up, she turns this way and that, but when we're going in a straight line, sometimes she gets a little heavy on the lead. And so I'm gonna see what I can do about that because uh, I, I showed you in another video how to deal with that. And uh, it's not something that happens a lot. Uh, it'll happen more if you give into the horse. If you're leading the horse and it starts lagging and you slow down for the horse, it's going to get worse. Guaranteed, it'll get worse. Uh, if horse starts lagging, uh, don't cut no slack. Keep on going at the speed you're going, and if that means you've got to pull pretty hard on the lead, then so be it. That's what you're going to do. But I did show you another little trick. Uh, I'll go get my, well, actually, I think I'll get the lead and halter and uh, my lunge whip, and I'll, I'll show you what I was doing before. I showed you once before. And it was how we addressed this problem. I'm going to show you one more time because I think we're going to have to do it again. And uh, this goes back to a principle of uh, if you're having a problem with your horse, uh, quite often the solution is, well, what'd you do the first time? Uh, if it's a reoccurring problem. Uh, because quite often you are going to have reoccurring problems and you're going to have to address them again. And some people get a little frustrated because well, this problem happened again, I did it this way the last time, but now it came back. Well, guess what? Do it that way again. Doesn't mean you have to do it a different way. Uh, sometimes there is a better way of doing things, but a lot of times it's just a matter of repeating what you already did. Because if it worked once, well, there's a good chance it's going to work again. So don't think you have to reinvent yourself or learn something new to solve a re reoccurring problem. If a problem occurs a second time, or a third time, or even a fourth time, uh, most of the time, you can fix it with exactly the same thing you did the very first time. So just keep that one in your memory bank, because uh, you will have reoccurring problems. I can guarantee that one. So anyhow, I'm going to go put a halter on her, get my lunge whip, and show you what we did before and what we're doing again. And well, I know it's repeating myself, but it doesn't hurt, because it's the, it's part of the theory of, uh, you know, if it worked once, it'll work again. And it, it did work. She got better. And she's been better for a while, but just, just lately, every once in a while when I'm leading her in, she just gets a little heavy on the lead, not as good as I'd like. She, she's not horrible, but not by any chance. I've seen lots of horses that are way worse, way, way worse. And, uh, but she could be better. So we're going to see what we can do about that. Uh, excuse me, come here. Good girl. That's a good girl. Very good girl. I'm going to leave that part in because uh, that was a perfect example of the progression that we've made uh, in uh, getting her to come to me. 
I was showing you how to do that once before. And uh, we've been repeating that several times over, and uh, it's getting better. And that's uh, twice now today that she has actually come to me without halter on, where I just asked her to, and she's come to me. So that shows significant improvement. Not perfect yet, not real good, but I'll tell you, it's a lot easier than trying to chase a horse around when you want to do something. Well, now because the wind is, uh, it's, well, it's not horrible, but it's significant enough that it's going to affect my string here. So as soon as I get myself untangled here, we'll demonstrate. Okay, you get behind me. Yeah, over there. Guess what? She's not listening. Okay. Now, see which way is the wind going that way? Okay, this should work. Uh, as we lead across, if you get, you see how I'm holding the lead, it's just laying over my finger, but if it gets heavy, to encourage her movement forward, we're going to swing this behind. And uh, if we have to, we'll tap her on the butt with it. This is light. It's not going to hurt her any. I don't like hurting animals. And uh, we're just going to keep doing this. Every time I feel her get heavy on the lead, I'm immediately going to swing this behind me, like right now. She just got heavy again. There we go. And we'll go back the other way. And we're just going to keep repeating this. Every time she gets heavy on the lead, I'm going to swing this behind. It's long enough. I can actually swing it right to her back end to put pressure on her. And if it's not being effective that way, I will tap her with it. Um, you know, again, this thing's extremely light. Uh, you can see what the wind's doing to it. Come on, move over. Hey, move over. Hit. See, we'll use this end. Oh, boy, she'd be in a whole bunch of problems today. Didn't want to get around behind me like she's supposed to. So, again, uh, well, you can see what the wind's doing to this. Uh, uh, explain a little more, just in case you see me tap her with it, which I might, it might even happen by accident. Uh, there used to be a core inside of this to make it a little bit heavier. I even removed that. So this is a, a very, very light piece. Uh, on the end of this lunge line, or lunge whip, lunge whip, yeah, not a lunge line. Lunge line's a different thing. So uh, that's uh, what we've got going here. It's very light. Uh, I like that because it makes it easier to maneuver around, but I can still crack it if I have to like that. I can make noises with it. I can swing it around, and it's a lot less work. But again, can I continue on? Do what I was doing. I'm leading. No. I did not hit her that time. Nowhere near her. Hey. Move over. What is with you? You're being a dork today. And again, there. She's not responding as fast as I'd like to the lead. I should be able to turn around and walk all over the place and she should not ever stop. I should never feel her tugging on the lead. It should be just light as a feather in my hand and slack like you're seeing right now. But if it ever tightens up, well, got a surprise for her. I'm gonna swing this thing. You know, she might not like it. Guaranteed she's not gonna like it. But that's the whole point. Uh, if she does something I don't like, in return it's gonna be something she doesn't like, and pretty soon she won't do it. And you'll notice how much better she's leading already. Still not perfect. I can still feel her back there. And in a perfect world you shouldn't even feel the horse, but you know, I've got to, I'll cut her a little bit of slack because she's a baby. I don't expect perfection. We haven't done this in a great deal. Uh, certainly not.
Uh, we haven't done this a great deal, certainly not in the realm of using this thing. So I don't expect her to be perfect. Uh, and if, uh, and it's one of those things I always say, you gotta be able to follow through. And a lot of times when I'm leading her, I'm not carrying this with me. So I can't do anything. I can't follow through because I don't have this with me. And there's absolutely nothing. If she starts dragging a bit, there's not a darn thing I can do. And as a result, I'm not even going to attempt to do anything. I'm simply going to continue. I'm just going to continue leading her and I have to pull the lead a little harder. Well, like that. Now, I didn't hit her again. You probably heard that, because that, that was one of the effects of this thing, is it makes noise. You know, the, the idea is not to hurt the horse. You know, get behind me. Go on. Jeez, she's being terrible today. If I had my flag, I'd turn around with that, or if I had more hands, I'd use the other end of the lead rope or something, but we kind of we got our limits to what we can do here. Well, so do you. You got your limits too. And uh, no, you get over there. No, no, get over there. Silly girl. She's being terrible today. Well, there you go. You have good days and bad days. You know, don't expect things to be perfect uh, and don't compare today to yesterday. You know, if your horse was really good at something yesterday and then today is not so good. Well, guess what? You're dealing with today's horse, not yesterday's horse. And if it means you have to address a certain thing, do something, that's what you got to do. And there's uh, lots of very famous good horsemen that say, hey, that's what you got to do. You got to deal with today's horse. You're not dealing with yesterday's horse. You're dealing with today's horse. Or they'll say, deal with the horse in front of you. And the, the, it's all the same thing, really. It's like, you know, never mind what else has happened. They may have done it perfectly yesterday and today it's just terrible and whatever. That's what it is, that's what it is. And uh, you know, you're gonna deal with what is going on today, not what went on yesterday. And uh, I don't know, I, usually when I lead her and I turn, she just goes around, gets behind me every time. Today is actually the first time in a long time, actually the first time since I taught her to lead that she's given me any problems and uh, not got behind me like she's supposed to, like, she, okay, she did too, too bad that time. That was decent. But uh, this is where uh, you kind of go wherever you want, be unpredictable. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna go this way. And, and also now I'm gonna decide, no, I'm going this way. And guess what, she better not be there, because I'm going this way. And if she didn't move, she would have been in my way. That's one of the things you gotta do. And, and uh, you know, I don't feel too bad about, even though this is a little bit repetitious, I don't feel too bad about doing this because it's a topic that I did not cover extensively. And it's, it's something that I can guarantee you're gonna have problems with. You know, it's just, I mean, some horses lead pretty darn good. And in many respects, she leads very good. Like when I stop, she stops. When I back up, she backs up. Actually, even that other one does that too. See, I stop, she stops. Now if I back up, let's see what happens. Guess what? She backed up. How about that? Come on. Well, all fairness, uh, she didn't respond to lead instantly and I did not hit her. There, that's better. When I'm turning, she gets out of the way, gets in behind me. That's more like what I'd like to see. Uh, if you're leading your horse and you have problems with that, that's where you can use your flag, then your lead. Line whip doesn't work real good for it. Uh, especially her, she doesn't really respond to it all that much, but uh, you can see how she's staying away from me. She's trying to stay behind me. That's what you want. I just heard one of the other horses whinnying, probably wondering where the heck she is. They get that way sometimes. So, uh, 
I don't think I'm going to carry on with this too much. Uh, I think I've done enough to give you an idea what you need to do. And uh, like I said, it's one of those many things that uh, you know, even if you do it a hundred times, it doesn't hurt to do it some more. And uh, she, tr she leads pretty good, far better than a lot of horses I've seen. But at the same time, it could still be a little bit better. So we're going to keep doing this. You're going to look at that, and uh, some of you might think that uh, she leads really, really good, and I don't need to do this anymore. No, wrong, because uh, doing this reinforces what she knows, so that the more we do it, she starts realizing that this is the way it always is. It's not a, not a oh, today I'm going to do it for you, tomorrow, pfft, whatever. No, that's not how it goes. Now get over there. I didn't hit her, I slapped the ground right behind her. I'm, I'm try, I try to be careful. Occasionally I might tap her, but like I said, this thing's light enough and it's not going to hurt her. Because I really don't want to hurt her. But this is the tool of choice right now for what I'm doing because of the reach I have with it. It allows me to propel her forward even though I'm in front of her. And that's uh, kind of what you want to do. And that's why I haven't got the lead quite as long as I usually do when I'm leading her around. Well, it's not too far. But uh, I quite often have it a little bit longer. But I can't today because I, I need her close enough that I can put pressure on when needed. And uh, it's going to surprise you. We're not going to go all the way around. We're just going to go halfway across. Well, and then we're going to turn back again. She didn't respond quick enough that time. Again, uh, we've never had this problem before. This is, this is actually a new problem. And uh, as good as she leads, there we go, much better that time. Every once in a while, we just have to remind her, get that big hairy butt out of my way, because I might just decide I want to go this way. Yeah, 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 that's not good enough. Better, better. There. That's better. And, uh, well... Like I said, you got to repeat things. And I'm getting tired of doing this already, but I think I might do it a few more times than there's a few other things that we're going to do. Uh, already she's getting better at the come, too. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, I thought I'd leave it in. It's actually the second time today she's done it uh, without being on lead. Oh, no, you stay there. Hey, back up. I didn't ask her to come in, so I had to correct her immediately. And you have to do that. Be, be, on, be vigilant. Be on the ball. Deal with things immediately. Don't let them get away with it, because if you do, you're, you're, you're screwed. If you let them get away with it, man, you are going to have problems. So I'm going to just take a step back here. And uh, I'm not going to pull on the lead if I don't have to. But I'm going to do what I did in the training of her. I would uh, use my hand gesture, clock, say, come. And then if I had to, to get her to move, I'd pull out the lead. But uh, she's actually getting a lot better at this. So I'm, I'm hoping today I don't have to pull on the lead because uh, twice already today, without even a halter on, she's come to me. So let's see what happens. Come on. No? You're not going to come now. Okay, you're just going to tighten up the lead. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Good girl. Keep coming. Keep coming. That a girl. Come on. No, a little more. Come on. No. There you go. That's why you got to do things over and over. We've done this quite a few times with her, actually. And she has gotten much better, but we're going to do it again. In fact, I think I'm just going to start over. I'm just going to let the lead out. And uh, come. There we go. I didn't have to cluck. I didn't have to put pressure on the lead that time. She came to me. Good girl. So it's it's not a case of she doesn't know what to do. It's uh, guess what? If you don't come, I'm going to pull on the lead. But then eventually we do that enough times it becomes habit that every time I stick my hand out and say come, I don't even have to cluck. She just comes to me, and uh, that's kind of what we're getting most of the time now. So. 
just thought I'd show you these things. I know you've seen that before, but uh, just thought I'd show it to you again. And, uh, you know, there's things like the cluck and the cum and stuff like that. You can leave one or the other out. Uh, the more cues you got, the better. Doesn't hurt. Uh, you can get results either way. Eventually, all you're going to have to do is stick your hand out and the horse will come to you. Good girl. Now I'm cheating a little there. I don't know if you're paying attention. I was creating a draw by backing up. But it's okay. I'm doing this in the purpose of training. So if I can get her to do what I want so that she can connect the hand gesture with the movement, it's working. Okay? That's what you want. So I'm going to do that again. She wants to come to me. Come on. Come. Come on. There we go. And, oh. There we go. Perfect. Well, always room for improvement. Doesn't matter what you're doing. But, uh, just thought I'd, uh, show you that one briefly today because, uh, there's a couple of little things that uh, I know they're repetitious. I've done this stuff before, but it doesn't hurt to show you again the importance of follow through and how many, how you have to keep repeating things. Because even though we've done both of these things several times, they can still get better. And we're going to do both of these quite a few more times. And I'm not going to bore you with them because there's actually a lot of stuff we do with her off camera. But I tell you, even just doing a few things can burn up time in a hurry. So uh, an entire hour can go by just in a flash. So, and we don't get a whole lot done, unfortunately. And uh, we've also been moving on to a lot of new things lately. Uh, there's still a couple more things to do. Uh, but right now, I think we're, we're already just about done. There won't be much more to do, at least not much more to show you. After that, it's just going to be simple repetition over and over, I'm afraid. There's only a couple more things that I'm going to be able to show you, uh, at least at this stage. But uh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, we're going to see what I can come up with. Uh, because a lot of times the things I end up doing with a horse is just things that uh, I come up with out of boredom. Like one day I had a few of my horses in the arena and I, the horse trailer happened to be in there. And I thought, well, I know my horses trailer are good, but maybe I can try something different. What can I come up with? And I thought, well, let's load them backwards. Well, at the time I thought it was, it, I thought it was being silly and just fighting boredom, but I started thinking about it after the fact. Uh, that actually wasn't such a bad thing, and I'll explain later why. But uh, it turned out there actually was, it made sense, and it was practical that I did that. But at the time, I just did it because, well, I was bored and always looking for something new to do with the horse. You just don't like this halter. Fine, I'll take it off. It doesn't need to be on you anymore. At least not right this minute. So, uh, I think that's enough for the halter. And uh, like I said before, you can do all things with quality, and I do this with this horse and the other horse. And, uh, well, it's not much of an issue with this one, but uh, you want softness in your horse. Before I take the halter off, I'm going to ask her to turn to me, and she's going to have to keep her head there without me wrestling with her. And then I'm going to take it off. And uh, there. Oh, she likes her scratches. What can I say? Anyhow, uh, just in case I don't find anything else to share with you, sorry for the short video. We'll see what else we can come up with. Maybe a little glimpse of the, that other little filly when I bring her in here. Might film something, I don't know, but uh, I'm kind of hesitant to do stuff with her because uh, everything that I would be doing with her I've already done with this one, but It'd be a first for you anyhow, because it'd be the first time you saw it with that particular horse. So, uh, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing is stuff that exactly the same that we've been doing with this horse. Certain things we've been doing slightly different, but that's because each horse is a little bit different. This is something I've said before to you too, is, uh, you know, you got to be flexible and you got to be willing to change up and adjust yourself to the individual horses. 
And, uh, oh, story time again, I think. I just thought of another one. True story. Uh, I went to this guy's demo, and it was a guy from another country. I didn't think I'd actually ever see him. I was quite pleased to see him, because I wanted to see how he did things. I'd watched quite a few of his videos, but they're more documentation of what he had accomplished with his customer horses to show them what he'd accomplished. So I'd always wondered, well, how did he get there? I want to see how he actually works with horses. And when I first started watching him, I thought, man, he's doing it wrong. I, I, was, I was ready to jump up and yell and say, you're doing it wrong. But no, he wasn't. By keeping my mouth shut and paying attention, I realized he was doing things very similar to how I do things. On the surface, it looked very different because how he approached things. But the end result was he was actually doing things pretty much the same as me. So uh, feel free to do things pretty much the same. Or, well, the underlying principles, anyhow. And then take what's on the surface that people see and make it work for you. Change it up a little bit. Make it work for you, make it work for the horse, your situation that you're in, because all those things are variables that dictate how you're going to end up doing something that's going to be the most effective and work the best for you. But Well, anyhow, uh, I think it's time we say goodbye. Just for today, though, we'll be back, because uh, I'm sure there's more we can show you yet. Not a whole lot. We're actually running out of things to show you. And uh, as you can see, uh, I mean, your goal at this age is primarily to make a horse that's very easy to handle and safe to be around. And we have certainly done that. Uh, she can be trimmed, she can be wormed, and she's very easy to handle. She's very social now. No one's getting kicked or bit around her. And uh, she'll yield to me anytime I want her to. Uh, if I want her out of my way, she'll move. I can do that. Uh, she'll get better. We'll make her more and more sensitive and, uh, you know, but you'll side pass away, side pass towards me, disengage, not much left. Just a couple things and uh, we'll get to them. And I'm actually going to enjoy showing you how to do them. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be at least a full video. Might even be two, depends. Uh, but I I'm going to do it with both horses. Uh, I'm going to video both of them when I trailer train them. Because that's an event that a lot of people have trouble with. And I want to show you how I do it with both of them. Uh, and at this point, I don't really know how I'm going to do it because uh, they're different horses. And I have a preferred way of doing things that's much safer, but I have found that for the very first time into the trailer, there is a certain way I need to do things, unfortunately, but it's required. It's, it's necessary to do things a certain way. Not necessarily the safest way, but to, to, there is a way of doing things that, uh, unfortunately, I have had to do quite a few times. But uh, if the horse has gotten to the point where it really trusts you and it's fairly calm, it's not horribly dangerous to do, but it is not as safe as, well, like I said, descend, remember descend. Ultimate, the best way to load a horse in the trailer is to stand on the ground and say, go get in the trailer. That way you're not in the trailer. That's the best way, but unfortunately, it doesn't always work. And you need to actually get in the trailer. But I'll show you that when we get to it. In the meantime, uh, go play with your horse, repeat things, do things over. Uh, if you have to fix something more than once, go ahead and do it. Uh, it's not a shame if uh, something doesn't appear to stay, stay fixed, because none of the stuff is uh, a single event. It's, I mean, honestly, uh, whether it's this horse or one of my own, uh, it could take weeks, months, even years to get things really good. And some things you may never ever stop doing. You will always do them every once in a while just to remind them that the rules don't change and that, uh, oh, by the way, when I ask for this, you've got to do it. You know, I might not ask for it for another six months. My goodness, my own horse over there, I really got to do something with her one of these days soon, too, because uh, I don't think I have done a thing with her in uh, a year and a half. Uh, well, we've done a few little things. I, I see her often and I go, just about every second day I spend a little bit of time with her, but we haven't done a lot of the things that we normally do with her. And, and uh, just to make sure she hasn't forgot, I'm going to do them again. And that's, like I said, she's, uh, what, 18, 19 years old now? And I'm still doing this stuff. So don't think, you you know, if you have to repeat it again and again and again, that's okay. You, you know, a lot of the stuff you're going to do, you're going to be repeating it for the rest of the horse's life if you want it that good. And 
well, a lot of people say, well, this is good enough. Well, it can always be better. So don't, don't hesitate to keep doing things. Anyhow, uh, go have fun with your horse. Spend some time with it. Repeat some things. Fix some things. Whatever you got to do. And figure out what's, what, what works best for you. Well, I, I did say that uh, there was a chance I might uh, come back again with the bay. And, well, here we are. Because it seems that today is a day for problems. Uh, things that uh, worked not too bad before, all of a sudden don't work so good. Uh, today she decided she wasn't going to lead so good again. And uh, then we also discovered something that, uh, well, she don't like this flag. Uh, her, her owner actually has one, but they just actually recently found it. Uh, they would misplaced it, and uh, they finally found it. And so this horse has never, ever been desensitized to a flag. It's never been exposed to a flag, period, except for last weekend when I had her running around at Liberty, which is a little bit different situation, because today I've got her on the lead, and she does not like this thing. Uh, I was asking her to move back and forth for me, and uh, she wasn't responding to the point and clock. So I escalated to the flag, and as soon as I gave the flag a tiny flick, she went ballistic. So clearly, she don't like this flag. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to address that. Now, in severe cases like this, where they really don't like this thing, now, uh, we just a couple minutes worth we've done on this. She's already gotten a lot better. Because uh, before I had, my, have it, had it as far away from her as possible while I was waving it around, like that. And uh, that was too much. She was going nuts. And I just held on to the lead, went with her sort of thing, until she decided to not run around anymore. And the minute she stopped moving, I set it down on the ground. Which, you've got to put it right down on the ground here, because otherwise the wind will get it. But uh, what you have to do to get a horse used to objects. Now this, this won't just apply to the flag. I'm going to demonstrate the same principle with my lunge whip because you may occur the same thing with a lunge whip too. Uh, but whether it's the flag, lunge, lunge whip, uh, even a rope, uh, same things can be done. Uh, anything you want the horse to get a little desensitized to a bit. Uh, we don't want to completely desensitize her to it and we still want her responsive to it but we don't want her having a meltdown every time I wiggle the thing. That's, that's not cool. And we don't want it to the point where she's scared to get near me because I got one in my hand. Stuff like that. So uh, we're going to do a few things here that you can do too. Exactly the same. Nothing, nothing fancy about this. Just lead your horse around. You can start off with just hold it in front of you. And uh, lead your horse around. Now already she don't want to move. There we go. <laughs> she don't want nothing to do with this thing. But we're just going to keep going back and forth. Nice and slow. Nothing fancy. And uh, after we do this for a few minutes, and she starts getting used to it, I'm going to start wiggling it a little bit. Now, already, she, I just felt the lead tighten up when I did that. She's uh, and I'm going to keep it away from her. I mean, if I want her to turn around and follow better, she can just wave it over that way. She'll move, but I've got to be careful because she might go too far, come flying right around me in a circle and wrap me up in the lead rope. So I'm just going to keep waving it in front of me and gradually, uh, I'm going to wave it a little bit more each time. A little more, a little more. A little wider, a little higher, lower, whatever, you know. And eventually, uh, this may take a while to get to this point, but I'm, I'm going to keep doing, I'm speeding things up. Is it, no, that's not good now. So what I'm going to do, she doesn't want to move because I'm waving her around too much. So I'm actually going to get her moving again by actually getting close to it or with it. Now she's already much improved. But she has her limits. And she said, I'd rather not get near that thing. Well, guess what? Uh, if, I, if she does that, I'm just going to get near her with it. That way she'll get moving again. She'll spin around like she just did. You just saw this, how this works. And uh, like I said, you just gradually get bigger and bigger with the flag. Now, I've still got it quite a ways out in front of me at this point. I got me between the flag and her. And this is what you're going to have to do too. Keep yourself between the scary object and the horse. Okay, remember that. I mentioned that in another video when the horse was getting concerned about that roll around bales. You always keep yourself between the horse and the scary object. That way, there's two advantages to that. 
uh, especially in the initial stages, if the horse trusts you enough, you're a kind of a buffer between the scary object and the horse. And so it feels a little safer there. And not only that, but if it does get a little bit too far over the edge and it can't handle it and it jumps away, so not gonna, it's going to go away from you. It's not going to land on top of you. That's very important. I don't want people getting hurt. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing this. And uh, I'm going to guess the way things are going, it's going to take a little while here. So I don't know how all this is going to work. She's getting better, though. See the lead? Getting slacker. So she, she's getting better. So I'm going to slowly bring the flag up a little bit higher. And uh, put it behind her a bit. There we go. Until it's pretty much going right over top of me. See? So inch by inch, it's getting closer to her. Oh, she, that's, yeah, she's showing some signs of hesitation there. Doesn't like that, that's okay. So this is our, this is our limit for now. Once we notice a little resistance, we're not gonna go any further. We'll take a time, take a time. Remember, that's how you do things. Take your time, go slow. Hey, okay. move over there. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do on the leading, too, with this one. I didn't do all, uh, most of her training. I don't even know how much she knows. Not a whole lot by the looks of it. Oh, she, she's getting real stressed out by this stuff. She's relieving herself right now. Uh, quite a bit. She's pretty stressed out. That's well, okay. We'll just keep doing this and keep moving. And uh, everyone, it's pretty much right over top of my head now, uh, depending on which way the wind's blowing. Wind's kind of uh, dictating where it goes. That's okay. You're getting the idea here. And as she gets better with it, we're gradually going to get closer. We're gonna actually going to get a little bit behind my head. And eventually, I might have to turn around and walk backwards to do this. And uh, I'm going to wave this thing between me and the horse. Uh, she's pretty cautious about that. She's like, I don't know about that. But she's getting better. And this thing's getting way closer to her than it was originally. Uh, when I first, first time I waved it, I had it as far away as I could get it, and she went nuts. Now, uh, getting pretty darn close, aren't we? And you just saw how long that took. Because uh, before I turned the camera on, I only did this like uh, a couple times. I waved it around, and she freaked out. And uh, when I saw how adverse her reaction was to it, I thought, you know, that's a, that's a good thing to turn the camera on for. Because I, I know darn well that some of you are going to run into problems like this where the horse is going to find things that are particularly scary. And uh, eventually you'll work up to the point where uh, you can rub the horse all over with this thing. I don't know that she's ready for that right now, but let's see how close we can get. Uh, oh, yeah, she's pretty wary. That's okay. It's all right. There we go. Good girl. There we go. And as soon as she relaxes a little bit, I take it away. And that's how you get him used to this stuff. You know, you saw her flinch and everything. You know, the wind was flapping it around, and every time it touched her, she'd flinch a little. There, she just flinched again. Much better than last time. There, it goes away. Ah, she turned her nose to it that time. She actually touched the, ha the shaft of it. I like that. That was very good. And because that kind of puts her in control of it. She made it go away. I, I was paying attention to that. I brought it over. As soon as she touched it, I take it away. Now, this is a principle that I'm going to show you later on in, when it comes to desensitizing is uh, horses are much less scared of things that they have control of. And if they can make the scary thing go away, well, guess what? They're not scared of it anymore because they're in control. So, okay, so I, I, I'm sure if she's not done with this, we're going to have to do this a lot more, but I'm going to stop there because it, that, that was actually pretty amazing progress. But just take your time, go slow, and read the horse a little bit. And things do go pretty quick for you sometimes. But I'm going to switch out now because uh, we've got to do the exact same thing with the lunge whip. Well, I don't know that we have to. I haven't tried it yet. But uh, it is something that you might have to. And so I'm going to show you how. Because you, basically you do it exactly the same as the flag. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make, first time I wave this thing around, I'm going to make sure uh, I'm between her and this thing. Yeah, she don't like it. See? You see the lead just tighten up? Because I'm waving this thing around. 
Well, she doesn't get too freaky about it, but she's not happy about it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with, as I did with the flag. I'm just going to keep it out in front of me, away from her, wave it around as we lead her around. Just keep waving it back and forth until we gradually get it closer and closer and closer. And eventually I'm going to start spinning it in a big circle and so that it's going up over my head and back. And that's where she, we just found the line, right there. That's as close as we can get. Uh, it is, the tip of it is almost over her head when it's spinning around. But ultimately I'd want to be able to stand right in front of her. Oh, there she goes. She just got soft again. So we'll just keep doing this for a little while. Let her get used to it before it advances any. Because we don't want her to think if she gets better about it that it's going to get worse. Oh, my God, she's getting way closer to me. And now, there we go. Uh, the center of this thing is almost directly over top of her head. Oh, darn, I'm going to be way off camera here. I'm going to move over and do this so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Because uh, I think you need to see this one, okay? Is uh, a big black cloud over there. Just stay over there. Go the other way. I don't care. Go somewhere. Go away. I must have come around me somewhere I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. So what we want to do eventually is get it right over top. So just like this, I'm going to walk up to her. And uh, basically this lunge whip is directly over top of her head now. And I'm spinning this thing around. She's a little cautious about it. She's not real comfortable with it yet. Well, that's okay. But ultimately this is what you want. Now, uh, I said I was going to do a video on desensitizing. I guess this is it. <laughs> so the other thing I want to do, and uh, I did it just a little bit back there, is that I cracked this thing. Because a lot of horses will really react adversely to that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with that that I did with the flag and swinging this thing around. I'm going to start off at a reasonable distance from her with this thing as far away from me as possible. I'm doing this backwards, but that's okay. My back's too. I apologize. I'm not, don't mean to do that. But here we go. There we go. And we're also slapping the ground with it. And these are things that you can do. She's not, she's a little concerned. She's keeping an eye on this thing, but it's gradually getting closer. There we go, we're gonna stop right there. That's as close as you can get. You saw her, where she finally decided to move. That's her limit. Uh, she was there, I got to about there and that's where we're going to stop. And if we start doing this again, we're not going to start that close. We're going to start a lot further away and gradually get to that distance again. That's our goal. So I'm going to start off way back over here, slapping the ground with it, and I'm gradually going to get closer. And I'm watching her. No, she's getting nervous. I'm not going to get any closer than that. I just saw that. Okay, that's pretty close to the same distance we were the last time is where she got upset and started moving. But this time she didn't move. So that's actually progress. Doesn't seem like it, but that's actually progress. You know, just because the wind is going the other way and makes it very difficult to control the where this thing hits the ground, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm not left-handed, so I'm not real good at doing this with my left hand. But eventually we have to do this side anyhow. So we're going to work our way to get up to her. Oh, look at that. Look how close we're getting. We're getting pretty darn close. Okay, we're about three feet away now meter, whatever, if you're metric. And uh, I'm actually getting to the point where if I get a whole lot closer, there's a risk of accidentally hitting her because I'm not that good with my left hand. I'm actually getting quite close to her and she's good about it now. Did you see how that worked? I started off way over there and as soon as I got to the point where she wasn't comfortable, I stopped and started over. And we got a tiny bit closer and we got a little bit closer yet. And this time we got just about as close as we could get without actually hitting her. So, you do that with the flag. You do it with waving this around. You do the same thing cracking it. I'm going to gradually do this closer and closer and closer to her until I can crack it right over top of her without her being concerned about it. She's a little concerned. That's as close as we can get. That's about <clears throat> 90 degrees out from her. A little, a little closer than that, but not much. But that's what we're going to do. And eventually, we are going to work up to, uh, I use this a lot like a stick and string. Whereas I'll take this and I'll just throw it over the rope, the, throw the rope 
or string part, whatever you want to call it, over the horse's back. Uh, she's not quite ready for that. I think if I threw this over her back right now, she'd get pretty upset. Uh, and that's where you got to kind of read the horse a bit, what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, there's already limitations in things we're doing here. She's not totally cool with this yet, but it won't be long at the rate she's improving, and we will actually be able to throw this over her back. And uh, I won't do it with that. I'll do it with the lead, because I, uh, I think she can handle the lead rope. Let's see if we take the lead rope, throw it over her back, see it like that, and then pull it off. We do the same thing with that. And, uh, but that's a little bit different. This thing, she sees it enough. She's not too concerned with it. It's all right, sweetheart. Don't you, even this, she's a little concerned. She hasn't had this done an incredible amount, apparently. So, uh, we're already finding lots of little holes in her, in her handling and training, and uh, apparently there's things we need to address. We're finding quite a few of them already, but uh, she's also making pretty good progress, too, I think. A number of things that we've been doing with her, uh, she's already uh, come a long ways on. Uh, everything from the leading to the sending to you name it. Uh, not too much that uh, can't do with her now. It's getting there. Uh, clearly she needs lots of work yet, but uh, I don't have to worry about picking up her feet. I've actually already done that. Uh, myself, I picked up her feet, although I didn't really do the a lot. I didn't do a lot of the training. Uh, a lot of it was done by somebody else. And uh, she's actually even been trimmed. Uh, but I, I think I may have had a little bit to do with how good she is with her feet because uh, I'd actually just ask her for a foot and pick it up gently. Uh, the owner actually was tying one up to get her the idea of picking up a foot and leaving it up. I don't like doing things that way, but uh, that's how they were doing it, so whatever. But uh, she has been trimmed. Uh, she has been handled, uh, led around a little bit, uh, not extensively. You know, lots of stuff has not been done with her, and the way she reacts to a lot of things, it doesn't really surprise me that uh, they're having problems with her, because I, I watched one day when they were working with her, and they were using their stick and string, because they couldn't find the flag, and uh, she, was, she was having a meltdown, and uh, I think it actually had to do with the fact that They'd never desensitized her to the stick and string before they started using it on her. And so she was just having a meltdown. Uh, her reaction that day when I was watching was very similar to her reaction today when I waved a flag nearby her, which already you saw in a short period of time how much better she got. So there you go. Uh, I think for now we're going to shut her down and uh, spend some time with her and see what, what transpires. I don't know what. Uh, kind of caught me off guard a little bit that uh, a lot of stuff needs to be better and that's okay uh, that means that we can pretty much start right from the beginning with her we already had to teach her how to get caught uh, working on the leading and now something just made her not focus here I don't like that get back behind me again dear uh, over a little more Yeah, she's not as good as that other one. Nope, nope, nope. She needs lots more work, and I don't know what just got her excited. There was absolutely no reason whatsoever. Something over there, she can see something moving, and she actually wanted to run that direction, which is really odd. Usually when they see something, they want to run away from it. I don't know what the deal is. Is uh, I don't see anything over there, but then horses have got actually superior eyesight to humans uh, when it comes to movement. Uh, they don't have good binocular vision. They can't focus well on things, uh, even close up. But uh, something two miles away can move, and they'll see it. And you won't even notice it's there. So, anyhow, uh, have a good day. I hope I got something out of this. Uh, it was kind of good in a way that I got to show you some stuff with this one that I never got to show you with the other one, because right from the beginning, I could wave the flag in front of her, beside her, rubber all over with it, and really wasn't much of an issue. Uh, this one, it seems to be a little bit more of an issue. Uh, she's not even super cool with the lead rope. If I throw it over, she gets a little excited. Yeah, she just jumped when I did that. Now she's moving. No, 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 you get back over here. Yeah, we got our work cut out for us. Well, anyhow, uh, 
I think we covered a couple items there uh, on desensitizing. I'm going to show you a few more things uh, when I get to them, um, both with her and the other one, because I think we'll be doing it with both of them. Uh, the other one, uh, ropes, lunge whip, flags, she's okay with all that stuff. Uh, this one, I think we're going to have to address all of that stuff. But then we're going to bring out that big scary poly tarp that uh, most horses absolutely hate or are afraid of or something. But uh, the other one, I don't think she's going to be too much of a problem with. Uh, this one here, I think she's going to actually, uh, she's going to need some help with it. That's okay. I know how to do that. I can do that. I can help her. So I hope you got something out of that. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.